Hello there and welcome to my guide about rocks and stones in Dwarf Fortress. In this video I'm going to cover the differences between one type of stone and another, I'm going to talk about economic stone, and I'm going to talk about a couple of hidden stats that will help you to discern one type of rock from another. I'm not going to touch the topic of metals because I already uh, covered that, I mean technically they start as a stone. And I'm also not going to talk too much about rock layers because I wanted to do this as a other video because that just would be a little bit too much for one. So let's get started with the economic stone section and then we go on over to the other stone section which has almost no information to them. So first of all, economic stones have of course their value in the product that you can make out of them. We have economic stones like alabaster and gypsum that allow us to make plaster powder. This is highly important for the hospitals. We have bituminous coal and lignite which make coke which is basically our our primary fuel before we hit magma. And then we have flux stones. These make steel but also, and that's interesting about them, they are more valuable than your regular stone. While a piece of alabaster and a piece of gypsum has the same value as a piece of rock salt, you will see here with a flux stone like chalk that it's double as valuable as the piece of rock salt. This value will be inherited by every item that you make out of it. So flux stones are pretty cool if you want to make more valuable crafts or more valuable furnitures that are still made out of stone. All in all, you must take care, of course, that you don't craft away all your steel production stones, but since flux stones often come quite in a high amount, this is really worth mentioning and knowing, because this is an easy way of increasing the value of your fortress. And of course, there's also the production of quicklime, which is in most flux stones, except for dolomite, for example. Quicklime is essential for the production of parchment, so that makes it even more of a problematic thing to decide whether or not you will refine your flux stone into something furniture-wise or use it for the economic uses. So beyond that, there's only this type of, type of stone here to mention, and that's kaolinite, which is, well, you should always refine that stuff. It makes porcelain, which is extremely valuable, and using kaolinite as it is, is practically a downgrade in every regard, because you literally only get a specific stone color out of it in exchange for skipping out on the most valuable type of uh, clay product. Beyond that, there's only left the field of ores, and there's also obsidian, but I will give obsidian a own uh, a own mention later, because I personally don't see obsidian as an economic stone. All right, so let's talk about the next topic, and that's the magma safety of stones before we go over to the other stone category. Stones come either as magma safe or not. It's quite simple like that, but it's also not. So first of all, you really should try to get yourself one type of magma safe stone in your fortress to work with later when you dive deeper into the magma layers where you want to work with that stuff. But magma safe stone is not magma safe stone. So for to give you an easy example, petrified wood, oh, sorry, wrong table, petrified wood is magma safe and so is pitch blender. Where's the difference? Petrified wood weighs roughly only a seventh of pitch blender, which means that stuff is going to be carried much, much faster than this stuff. And so keep an eye out on the density of your materials and when you're choosing your magma safe stone. And well, I personally would recommend you to just select one type of stone, which is uh, quite available and don't destroy all of it for the later usages. But there's, I just wanted to mention that the weight differences between magma safe stones they really do matter, so check out that you don't accidentally t pick up the heaviest stone of them all. So, which brings me right next to the non-economic stone section and the most important difference between these. Because honestly, when we go to the non-economic rocks, they are really, really very, very samey after a while. Their biggest differences are their density, which reflects in their weight, and of course, their color. So let's talk about the density first. 
So as you see here, one piece of rock salt weighs 217 units, whereas a piece of clay stone weighs 270. This is uh, already quite a bit of a difference when we check out granite 260, bauxite 310, marble 278. You might notice that they all gravitate somewhere around 200 and 300. That's the average weight of the of a stone so to give you a couple of worthwhile mention uh, worthwhile mentionings jet is the non-economic stone with the lowest density which only will weigh 135 per unit which is really really impressive and uh, on the other side of the spectrum comes cinnabar with roughly around 800 units of weight which comes down as the heaviest non-economic rock why is weight interesting and where is weight interesting? Well, if you go over to your stone workers workshop and you order them to make, for example, large pots. So, or where they are here, yeah, rock pots. I'm blind. So, ah yeah, that's because they are made here. Hang on. So if you want to make rock pots, they they will inherit the density of their of their material which they are produced with, which means a rock pot made out of stone salt is weighing way less than a rock pot made out of cinnabar. So it really does matter what you make your material, what you make your items out of. And here you also always have the opportunity to, to, to actually tell your crafters what to work with. So density matters. Where is a high density interesting though, you might ask yourself. So first of all, when we go for traps, it's quite obvious a heavy stone does more damage. Although it's a little bit hard to assign this really because you cannot tell them what type of stone to use. The only thing that I know of is to store the heavy stones in the vicinity of your stone traps, which will lead your dwarfs to pick what's closest. But uh, besides that, it's also interesting to note that if you make your flooring out of a heavy material, the floor will also do more damage if somebody falls on it. But uh, on that, in that regard, lead and platinum as metals are the heaviest stuff that you can bring up, but a cinnabar flooring would be a way cheaper and same and a comparatively effective method. So in a nutshell, keep an eye out on the density of your stones. It really makes a difference in terms of uh, the uh, end product. So as you see here, one mudstone pot is 10, one rock salt pot is, uh, sorry, 12, and one rock salt pot is 10. So there is a difference and it, it's really worth uh, checking this out. Beyond that, there are, well, let's, uh, there are, there's also worth mentioning that there are a couple of real weird stones. So, for example, saltpeter is really interesting because it's a very, very light stone and, uh, well, it boils in magma, which is really, really weird, but it does. And graphite, for example, is a stone that can burn without being destroyed outright, so you could set it on fire and let it burn for around nine months. So all in all, some stones have a, what I'm trying to say is some stones have a obscure side use that's pretty hard to discern and I'd strongly recommend you to refer to the Dwarf Fortress Wikipedia if you really want to dig down that deep. But for the average user, knowing the weight and the value of your stone and the discerning where to use it out of that is totally okay. What's also worth mentioning, which is quite obvious, but I want to talk about it, stone colors also help you to give a your your fortress a certain certain look. So you can use stones as kind of your palette when you want to build a fortress. So sometimes you might be really, really happy to see some certain rock popping up like bauxite which has a certain color. When you check this out there are lots of different colors and every every stone will result in a building that reflects that color. So if you want a nice green, olivine and marcasite come in mind as comes periclase. So if you want to follow a certain color scheme 
well, stones can be quite interesting. But beyond that, they all share the same characteristics. You can make the same items out of them. The only difference is that they will be, well, of different weight and they will share, they, they will inherit the stats of the native material. Okay, so let's talk about obsidian real quick, because obsidian is something special. So, obsidian is so special that it's even mentioned over here in the economic stone tab. So here we already get told that obsidian creates sharp blades, but that's not all that, that's not all about it. So first of all, what's really interesting about obsidian is it has a relatively low density. It comes with uh, 235, I think, so it ain't too heavy, but it comes with a value of 9. So it's it has the the uh, the triple the value of your regular stone. And to make it most interesting, obsidian can be created by your own dwarves, which is the only stone in the game that can be created by yourself. All it requires is a bit of magma and some water. The moment water and magma combine, steam and obsidian are created. And as you see here, obsidian is also a magma safe material, so it's, uh, it's a very, very interesting thing. Some biomes have obsidian naturally occurring, but if you don't have obsidian naturally occurring and you stumble upon it in the caverns or something like that, be wary, especially if it's hot, if it's warm to the touch or even damp. It might contain a nasty surprise. So beyond that, there is really not that much more to say about uh, about stone. I really did a lot of digging, and all in all, I came up was that some stones like your graphite can burn have some weird side use, but it's mostly about the weight and the value when it comes to stone, and of course the color of the stone, because that really makes a lot of the design choices. Okay, I hope that was helpful for you, and feel free to drop me in the comment section anything that you think I might have missed about that topic. I'm going to drop a video about the rock layers quite soon as well, so if you want to check that out, I'd be really, really happy. Besides that, leave a thumbs up on that video if you, if you want to make it more visible for other people, and consider subscribing. There's daily content coming up from my side, and if you like this one, chances are you like the rest as well. There's also a playlist link in the description box, and that is leading to all the other Dwarf Fortress tutorial videos that I did. So, thanks for watching, and have a wonderful day.